Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to Floodland. Now this is a sponsored series where I'll be playing and guiding you through the initial stages of the game, which just released on Steam today. Just check the description in the top comment to find the link that'll take you right to the Steam page. Now Floodland is a society survival game set in a world destroyed by climate change. There's conflicting ideologies, limited resources, and tough choices to make as you battle for survival and grow your colony. The game is developed by Vile Monarch and published by Raven's Court, so thank you to them and to Play On for sponsoring the series. And if you've been with the channel for a few months now, you'll know that I covered the Steam Next Fest demo a little while back and went very in-depth explaining how everything works. Today, I'll be aiming to go beyond the demo content and start expanding onto different islands and taking on citizens of different ideologies. And once we start unlocking laws, we can then really start to shape our society. There are four clans to play as, but I'm going to be playing again as Burkett 3, the former oil drilling platform workers and their descendants. They gotta focus on science, rational thinking, along with order and security. They recognize the old world's mistakes, and they want to avoid repeating history. Now, if you want to avoid repetition, simply play the game again, and you'll have different randomly generated maps, resource locations, and events, which keep the playthroughs feeling fresh. I'll also be playing on a harder difficulty for this first full run, just to give myself a little extra challenge. Now before we start as well, if you like the video and you want to see me continue beyond the sponsorship, then just let me know in the comments. And of course, drop a like on the video, and I'll try to continue the series. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are, our plucky band of adventurers, our survivors, all ten of them, gathered around our little makeshift encampment. Now I've left the tutorial on, but I'm going to be skipping through a lot of the most basic stuff. It's just really if I get a little confused or need to see something that I haven't yet seen for the first time as we get further and further past the prologue. All right, so we've got events, a new beginning. We've arrived. This is where the scouts sent up those flares. It looks like they were right. They found the signs I had told them to look for. This is Nicole Johnson, our scientific advisor. Now, I'm not going to be reading everything she says because I've already read absolutely everything the first time I played through this prologue in my original video. So if you want, you can obviously just pause the screen, have a look, or go check out the other video if you want a word-for-word -word reading of everything. But instead, I'm just going to kind of go through it a little bit quicker here and just read mostly the objectives and then maybe what Philip Johnston, our clan leader, has to say about certain things. So... Maybe the first line, the last line, something like that, you know, I'll try to make it brief. So, we need to gather safe food supply before we set up camp. We can't jumpstart a civilization on an empty stomach. So, let's advance. So, this is the prologue, Stationary Travelers. Find all the scouts and establish a permanent settlement. If we're to begin a new civilization here in the wetlands, we're going to need to build an infrastructure to rest it upon. We'll need to build it one tent at a time. Alright, so... The first thing to do is to gather a safe food supply before you set up camp. That is our objective in the top left of the screen. I'm just going to get started on that immediately by putting down these search flags. So, they're search and explore flags. They become explore flags when they're out in the fo fog of war, and they're search flags when they're within your vision. And the reason for that is the explore flags uncover the fog of war, and then you have to actually go search it to pick up resources. So, we'll just pick up some of the food that's here, maybe some of the food that's here, and then just queue up uncovering different parts of the map. All right, and we'll just let time play now. So while our buddies are off doing that, we can go through the UI and explain things a little bit. Up in the top left, we have our population. So currently we've got 10 with five idle and available for work. The other five are assigned to the encampment. And that means that they're gonna be kind of gathering, moving things around. It's kind of like storage management, basically, distributing goods to other buildings when we get them later on. We then have, we'll talk about those other things later, they don't really matter right now. We have risky food, safe food, so that's going to be kind of raw food that can lead to food poisoning, and then safe food, which is obviously like cooked food or food that doesn't need to be cooked. Then we've got potable water, aka drinking water, wood, and rubbish. And that's basically everything we've got in the top left bar for our resources. Our flares are just going live now, so we're uncovering parts of the map. Now the map is actually deceptively big, there's lots of other places that we can eventually go out to when we start getting rafts and exploration and activating radio towers and the like, and then we can find more people, more clans, more ideologies, and try to build a society. So we'll see if that all works, but for a while we're going to be focusing on this island. Alright, so, we've got more flags to put down now, now that we've uncovered so much, let's just tell them to gather lots of stuff. That's still exploration, actually. And just go a little further out to some of these places. All right, cool. So, another thing while time is now playing is that you want to be really, really thorough, manually, looking around the map to see what you can interact with. 
it's one of the first things that tripped me up when I played the game for the first time. It was that I didn't realize items like this, this yacht wreck, can be clicked on and then searched manually. It's actually just slightly outside our field of view, so we actually can't quite get it. Oh no, our task limit is reached, that's why. Okay, fair enough. But like, another one like this, for instance, there's wood here, rubbish, there's risky food, water, etc. And that's not covered by putting down a flag on it. You have to go and get it manually, so you're gonna need that desperately on the harder di harder difficulties because there's a bundle of really good resources and all of these different kind of objects that you'll find around the place some of them can be turned into um, they can be searched you can find survivors you can turn them into houses turn them into factories all these different things so got to be really thorough in collecting them we're finding them because it's not pointed out for you uh, okay let's keep going that's how we do we've got 38 food I'll just speed up time just a little bit there we go, our fog of war is just being uncovered. We're gonna tell them now to go to the yacht wreck. To the boat wrecks. Cast the shore like toys. They're still floating, but there's no sign of life in them. Um, the water tower. Not fully uncovered for us just yet. Decayed ruins. Building remnants. So many of these. They're all like... It feels like they're hidden, you know? Large rubbish piles. Now this, these ones, for instance, need actual different buildings. So we need to get a sorting hut out of the tech tree for that. All right, let's just speed through the night. All right, it's the new dawn. It's a new day. Look at him waddling his way back to the camp. All right, we'll just keep speeding it up until we get our 60 food. We should have enough orders around us to get everything from all the different places. There we go, success, a new beginning. Uh, gather a safe food supply, done. Next. The scouts we sent to explore this area moved on to continue their expedition. So far everything looks good, it's definitely the right spot. The scouts are currently holed up in some of the derelicts around here, let's go find them. Find the scouts hiding in the nearby ruins. Alright, so there's just the one ruins right in front of us. I think for the prologue you do always start on this island. Um, so, click on the portrait on the left side of the screen to get an overview of the assignments. It's basically our objectives, our missions. You can get dynamic missions from random events that kind of happen and occur. Like, for instance, if you're not giving people enough housing, you can fulfill, you know, you can kind of promise people that you will do that job, and then you get a kind of an objective up here to fulfill. So, we have the building remnants here. A certain amount of people in there, some rubbish in there, and 60 water. So, we'll just tell them to go search for people before we get building anything yet. And you can just see we're currently consuming 10 water per day and 20 food per day. So we've only got 10 people, so I guess we're consuming two for each person and one water for each person. You finished searching the place? Let's check it out. We found them. The scouts have barely survived the expedition. They lost most of their equipment and the resources when their boats sank in the storm. Now they're happy to join us, but they need to be sure we have enough food if they're going to be part of our settlement. They say they can manage our own on their own for a while. They don't need to be a burden. So invite them to join us. We needed 40 food to do it. Yep, let's do it. All right, good, 10 more people. We're now up to 20 and we've got 15 idle. All right, so the next thing, new development possibilities are available. We're after getting a research point, okay? So it looks like we're no longer nomads, which means we'll have to start laying down serious routes. Upgrade the encampment like into a permanent storage facility. Easy peasy. So introduction to technology development. We'll just click into the tech tree. Here's our tech tree right here. Exploration, growth, survival, and well-being are all the different categories. Go into exploration, and we can see here our small storage, which we can now, you know, that's for the encampment to upgrade into. Uh, we've already done the new start. Yep, this is all good. Develop for one research point. Easy peasy. So that's the resource, uh, research resource up in the top left that we can monitor. <clears throat> By the way, I'm a little bit sick at the moment, so apologies if my voice sounds all over the place. I can barely hear myself. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, right, we're all good. So we've got that. We just need to actually upgrade it now. So 300 rubbish, and we can begin. So we'll just start doing that. Construction progress. This should allow us to host 10 people. The range will be 70, extending our blue circle further out so we can explore further and further. We want to always kind of have this on the go. So it looks like it's just water out this way. Make sure we get the very edges, just in case we're missing anything. And that's kind of it we can do for now. 
So on the top right, we have our sort of a notification bell. I guess there's no issues right now, but we can expand that out usually and see a bunch of problems. The task list, so we can reorder the jobs and the priorities of them. We then have district information. We don't get that till a little bit later. All right, all looking good. We'll just speed up time. The encampment has been upgraded. We're after gaining ourselves another research point. Resources are limited, so it may take some time before we can accommodate everyone. They want us to build some houses for people or tents for people. So yeah, we can get started on that. Why not? Provide tents for your people. Build at least one. So we'll just build one, because that's all we can really manage right now. Excuse me. So that's in the well-being category. Tent. Makeshift tent made of rubbish with sheets of fabric draped over it. Water and food can be taken from here, as well as medications for food poisoning. People simply sleep here. No recreation. You've got different modes later on as well. If you end up getting electricity, you can power tents. Alright, we'll just click build it so we can build it straight away. I'll just put one right down. Actually, this is a kind of a workplace thing. People will go from to and from where they're working, so... Probably come down here. So we'll build one just slightly closer to the little area down here. Just a little bit. Try to put them where our, yeah, on the coasts, because that's where we're going to be fishing. We can't dream of creating a better world if some of our settlers don't have a roof over their heads. Take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry about that. People don't need roofs over their heads when, when, they're, they, when they don't have food in their bellies. That's really the priority is to secure a lot of food if we can. Can we get this yet? Yes, we can. The water tower 102. We found that in the demo and I was livid because I found it at the end of the video. <laughs> Alright, cool. We'll search that as well. So that should be plenty of water for a long time. How's everything else? So these are all completely scavenged now. Nothing really left for us there. Well, we'll just wait for this house to be done. We're still pulling back the resources from here, by the way, so we should have plenty to keep us going for a while. Alright, success. People needed shelter. We provided a tent for a person. We have 10 research now. Okay, so time for a reality check. Provide a steady supply of edible plants or fish. Ensure that people have steady access to clean water and gather a supply of rubbish. Okay. So. Build at least one forager hut or fishing dock. So we've got 157 risky food right now. 18 safe food. 92 water. No one's eating any of the risky food yet because they're just going through all the safe food. So what I'm going to do is just make sure we're getting as much of that safe food as possible before they start eating the risky food because it could be dangerous. So we'll just tell them to get a few more gather orders for some of that food that's out there. Alright, we'll leave it at that and then we'll go into our tech development. Okay. We'll open up rubbish because it's super needed. So three tech points will give us rubbish. Allows us to learn a little bit more about it. It's kind of like a foundational research so they can lock other research things later on. We obviously know what rubbish is, we've been collecting it. It's just that it allows us then to kind of expand and get into different things. So we've now got a fishing dock, a forager hut, and a water still. We have seven research. This one costs one, two, and two. Well, we could get all three. I think ultimately we need the dock and forager hut first. So let's go with the dock. Actually, the forager hut's probably better because it creates regular safe food, whereas the dock creates risky food. So we'll just go with this one first and then see if we need to spend points into anything else. Like for instance, growth, the sorting hut, yes. Super important. Workers regularly collect and sort resources from larger deposits. Enables collecting rubbish from the area, okay? It's two points, so we've only got three points left. Let's just back out for a sec. So, Rubbish deposits will be things like this. So these are regenerative. They come back over time. Uh, where else? Yeah, I've got some piles out here as well that we can see. Looks like there's a pile over there. Alright. So let's get building. So in the survival tab, we now have the forager hut. And we can basically put that... Can we get all three? Yeah, it looks like we can. Just pop it right around here. That's 350 rubbish. So what we might have to do first is get the sorting hut first so we can actually get some of the rubbish first tough one though it doesn't look like we can get all three. Oh, we oh no we can't <clears throat> it's on a cliff what about down here it's actually a third deposit down there <clears throat> excuse me again sorry all right we'll build it there let them get started on that constructing buildings don't worry about that i know everything about it all right we'll speed up time so this is going to be a priority construction we set it as the top priority we've got 
issues. There are 17 homeless people in your community. Provide them with shelter. So what that's going to do is create unrest. So below Philip Johnston here, we can see unrest is at neutral. We're at 36 out of 100 before it goes up to the next tier. But for in the beginning of the game here, it's not going to be too bad. We've got a pretty small population, so there isn't going to be things like crime or anything like that just yet. All right, we'll keep it on medium speed for now. And now we start to get into the job priority part of the game. Also, we should just keep putting down flags to constantly explore. All right, this area is pretty much done. We can go further and further out this way. This is the limits of where we can explore that blue ring. And it looks like there's plastics and things down here. All right, cool. Get stepping. All right, speeding up time during nighttime, especially we can just go pretty fast. Making good progress, I think. Good time. Alright, we're just covering that little part of the map over there. So, it's already automatically assigned two out of two workers to this place. It's now making, what is it, 55 rubbish daily. But there is a deposit. There are pulling from deposits. They can empty out if you've got too many things pulling from it. They might not regenerate that much per day. So, we'll just have to kind of feel it out and see if they're getting low or not. Oh, we're still getting stuff from the boat wrecks. Oh, no, we're not. Sorry. It's from the, um water tower. We do have 192 water, so we do have a lot to keep us going. We can also turn this house into a renovated house, which will hold five people. A tent only holds three, so that's a nice little house that's just there for us. Out of curiosity, if we were to go tent, it's 150 to store three people, and it's 250 to store five. Which is just the same rubbish cost, isn't it, really? So it's not really any bad or different. <laughs> but it is there and it looks nice. Alright, cool. We're uncovering things out here. What do we have? Uh, more people, potentially. A key. A lockpick, even. Rubbish. Safe food. And a knowledge point. An old world relic. Excuse me. They can be turned in the study into um, knowledge and research. Alright, we'll send people out there to search that as well. So we're currently gathering, yeah, we've already got 556. So let's now build the other thing that we needed for survival, which was the forager hut in that place in between places. All right, cool. So that'll be food coming in regularly. We've got 53. The map is our, the world is our oyster. We can still keep gathering food from everywhere we find around here. Any food out here? Not really, actually. Okay, it looks like we're, we've kind of expended almost all the food on the map that was just like to be gathered. Now, actually, Food does kind of regrow, only very, very small amounts. And same with plastic, you never completely run out, but you could, like, obviously completely destroy your economy if you don't have enough. Um, so, provide a steady supply of edible plants or fish. Ensure that people have steady access to clean water. Yeah, we haven't done either of those just yet. I suppose that means it wants me to get the water still in here. Okay, so we can build that. That's 320. That gives us water coming in on the regular. And then a fishing dock is only two. So I suppose we'll just get this as well. All right, sweet. And that's going to allow us to get a field kitchen in the future, which allows us to turn the fish and the raw food, the risky food, into safe food. We can't get that just yet, though. It's too expensive. So they got a bit of a long distance to get out here. Storage workers are on their way. Okay, let's just speed up time. Your attention is needed, is it? Oh, yes. The people are hiding in these ruins. They'll join us, but only if we have a sufficient supply of drinking water, which we do, 185. All right, sure that there's enough water for everyone. These people we've met, they're eager to join us. All right, cool. Extra people. Wow, that was another 10, was it? Yeah, we're up to 30 already. Whoops, sorry, it was an autosave. Okay, there's a lot of homeless then, but we're up to 30. Awesome. So we can get everyone to work nice and quick then. Let's just explore... Hmm. Can't move through deep water, we don't have boats. Alright, we'll just put an exploration node there. A little bit of plastic down here. Alright, cool. Alright, this is going very well. Much better than last time, actually. So... <clears throat> Provide a steady supply. Yep, we still have to do that. So we're just building the forager hut now, which will be a steady supply of food. And then we need a steady supply of water, so we'll just get building that as well. So that's going to be the water still. 320 plastic. So, unfortunately, I can't put it down until we have the right amount of plastic first. 
So just speed up time. So two people should get assigned to this. We've got 18 not doing anything. Now 16. So that's going to be food coming in on the regular. We're currently burning through, still burning through 15 food daily, even with that up and running. And there's all our extra people. They're coming in. Coming in hot. Alright, so just building that water is the last thing. So we just ultimately need some more plastic. Yeah, we just got it, actually. Good. So this needs to be built out on water, as far as I'm aware. Put one of them right there. Does it tell me, actually, how much it makes? 17 and a half daily. What's our current burn rate? 30 daily. Oof. So we're going to need two of them at least. Probably only need one of them at the beginning, though. Alright, we'll just keep speeding up through time. We can't dream of creating a better world if some of our settlers don't have a roof over their heads. Take care of it. I'll get to it, Philip. Jesus Christ. Always complaining. Another area right out here, ripe for the um, placement of another rubbish thing. What is it called? <laughs> Sorting hut, yeah. It's in growth, okay. Wouldn't have thought it'd be placed in growth, but it is. So there's one that we could get here. Unfortunately, this is in the way, so we can't really get all three unless we build a separate thing. So I'll just build another one down here then. Keep it as close back as we can, right there. All right, all good by me. And then we'll start building new homes maybe later on uh, after that's done. The next two buildings. In fact, can I prioritize this one just to make sure that this goes first? That top priority, there we go. So we should see that in the task list for construction tasks. So the construction task for the water still is above the other one. It's got two people on it now. That one was already got started, so they're both being done at the same time, really. No big deal. Uh, the next one then would be building fishing, I think, and then getting a kitchen up and running. Because they're going to start eating that risky food soon, I think. They're probably still pulling back some of the food here, though, which is good. Alright, we have a new assignment. Ain't got no... Sorry, I ain't got a clue who to ask for help anymore, so I'm coming to you. There are two guys working at the storage, Kevin and Jerry. There are guys from Burkett 3. And they're constantly arguing, disturbing all around in the process. And, well, I hate to say it, but they're arguing about you. Kevin says you've been making a lot of bad decisions these days, causing unrest in our clan. He doesn't beat around the bush about it, neither. Jerry's always defending you, but he gets riled up bashing Kevin and starts berating everyone else. I'm gonna punish Kevin. I think I remember what I did before. I'm a classic centrist. I'm probably just gonna say I'm gonna punish both of them for being unprofessional. We got bigger problems to worry about. We're on a, all on the same team here. So settle it and figure it out. Alright, we're just after gaining ourselves 10 risky food and 30 people got a new status placated. Their bickering has stopped, at least at work, but they still fight constantly at every other occasion. That's fine. That's fine. Alright, good. We've actually got a ton of wood as well. Any extra bits of food we can find? There's some food that's come back here and here. So we'll just grab that as well. Anything any further up? There's one there. Alright, good. Alright, so two people on the water still. Two people on the sorting hut out this way. Two people on the sorting hut out this way, which has even more. So rubbish should be coming in pretty fast now. Convert to a renovated house. Don't want to do that yet. I don't think people are going to be too mad that they're homeless just yet. Collect that wood, by the way, as well, if you can. All right, so that's job done. What do you got for me, Nicole? Production chains. 18 research. Goddamn. All right, we should start studying everything we can. We can. Old world relics, water levels, radiation levels in our food. The more we know, the more likely we are to succeed. All knowledge is good knowledge. Provide a place for people to study and gain enough research. All right, so that's going to be in the tech tree itself. Wood. Develop technologies based on wood. That's 15. And the field kitchen. Well, how much is the field kitchen? Two? I think we can get both. All right. Let's go with that. Growth, the study. That's only one. Excellent. We'll build that in a second. And then the field kitchen is the next thing I want. So survival, field kitchen, boom. All right. That costs 300 wood. I'm just trying to think. Do I have the means? Well, let's see. Let's try to build a study first. I just don't want to soft lock myself somehow. I'm assuming I can't, but just in case. So that's 350 wood. Oh, yeah. I would be short, wouldn't I? Because the other one was 300. 
the field kitchen. So it's 650 in total. Did I get that wood? Oh, I haven't got that yet. Okay, so you could do both. All right, well, let's just go with the study first then. Because that's the immediate thing it wants me to do. So let's just do that. Do it in the order it, it, it wants me to do it. I'll just give it some space here. All right, so that's the next thing. Let them go get that wood. Hopefully, if they've got enough, then we can build that field kitchen and start... Before we start eating the risky food too much, we can turn it into, hopefully, safe food. All right, looking good. Looking good. We don't have any homes, but looking good. We're still losing money, still losing food, though. So, Or, not money. Water. And still losing food. So, obviously, their priorities. So, the goods have been just about delivered for this. For the study. And the wood has come back in, so we can build the other one, which is survival, field, kitchen. So, we're going to be getting fish. I'm just trying to think. There's fish over here. And I think there's some over there. I'll just build it slightly towards this side, so that the journey isn't too far. I don't know if they basically get their food from the storage pit, or if they take the food straight from the fishing into it. It'd be nice if they did that, so I'll just put it in the in the midpoint. And that way I can't be wrong. Uh, bright minds and able bodies are the core of a strong nation, says Philip. Alright, so our study is done. So the study, I'll explain it really quickly. Effectively, how it works is they turn old world relics, which you find in different places, into research. Very simple. Every one relic gives you ten research. Later on, we'll be able to change the building so we can do different things, not just this. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to burn through these three and get ourselves 30 research so we can get more things in the tech tree. So we'll just let time play. Everything's good. We have 10 people who are idle right now, so I guess if we can just explore a little bit, let's just do it. Now, the people who are exploring are always the people that are in the stockyard. There's no more food or anything around here, though. This place is barren, so it's pretty much done. Yeah, we'll just tell them to go a little further out that way then. Seeing as we have people idling. What's this? Heavy workload. Workers have difficulty keeping up with tasks. Yeah, they, it's just because they have to go very far to do the thing. Uh, what's this? Buildings have a certain number of work posts that can be manned. The more workers, the more efficient. Yep, that's all good. We have 10 people on it. They're all aligned with us ideologically as well. Proper meals will let us stay strong. Glad that we have a new kitchen. Damn right. So we can start really start cooking that food. So it's 24 per day. That's going to turn into... Sorry, no, it's not. 13 and a half daily. Every eight risky food turns into nine safe food. <clears throat> so it's not a great conversion rate, but if we can upgrade it in the future, it'll be a lot better. Tempting to build another one, but we need more wood, so I can't do that yet. A storage has workers with too many tasks to handle. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Don't worry about it. They've got nothing else to do anyway. Alright, rubbish is building up nicely. Our food is disgusting. People are going to get upset soon. Yeah, they're going to be eating that ris risky food, unfortunately. So it's time to build a fishing dock. So we've got a fishing dock. Uh, we'll have to build it somewhere like here. Yep. And maybe... We'll just build the one for now. Yeah, I don't know why I left that so long. That was a bit of a mistake. But, I mean, we do have risky food in storage, so I guess it's not that bad. But still, we could have been getting it while we had people idle. Um, although, I guess not, actually, because I barely have the materials for it anyway. We just ran out of plas uh, rubbish. We've got 263 being brought over, so they have to just get more, I guess. There we go. Success. Um, so, we gained five research points. We've got a new mission. You have to start forge forging connections between the clans. You're in charge, but the people have their own opinions. You have to find a way to keep everyone together and focus on the goal. Still, we're well on our way. Set up... <clears throat> oh my god, my voice is going. Set up a specialized work post for people with certain specializations. Set up a learning environment for people to develop their specializations. Increase fortitude amongst people and fill in one of the specialized work posts, okay? So, this is where it gets pretty interesting. So, in our clan profile... Our water situation, food, and health of the people is all pretty good so far. Unrest is bubbling up a little bit. 
And we did start, if you remember I said, we started with level 1 precision. So this is, these are different levels that your clan can have. And each level gives you a worker who is focused on that particular specialization. I think that's how it works. I'll totally know for sure if we ever need two of them. Or at least when you have one of them, I know that it definitely does work. Um, but yeah, basically, we have to build up the experience of our clan. In order to do that, we have to basically put the textbooks into the study uh, building. And once we put the textbooks in, that'll level up our... I think each one's like 5,000 um, experience. That'll give us a point, we'll put it into fortitude, and then we'll be able to assign someone to that building that needs fortitude, such as safe food or collecting rubbish or scrap. And that makes them more affected, effective and efficient at doing that particular thing. So there's quite a few things to, to kind of digest here, but let's just get into it. So survival, growth, exploration. So we've got 15 points now. We're going to get a bit more soon enough. The reclaimed radio tower, medium storage, pathways, all of that. That's fine. Let's go back over to survival. The fishing wharf, the forager house, so we can upgrade them. So we're going to upgrade the forager house. Well, before I do that, actually, we will do that. But I'm actually going to go academy first. That's three points. That'll allow us to get the knowledge from the textbooks. And then a logging hut is more important as well. It allows us to start getting wood. So we can build a second kitchen. And help our food situation. All right? So we'll do that. We're still going to get more research soon enough. So I'm not too worried. Um, so in here, I'll turn this off. We'll change the building mode now from standard to academy. And that's going to allow us to take in the textbooks and turn it into... Every one is 10,000. Oh my. That's more than five. So um, it's double what I thought, obviously. So we've got two textbooks. We'll see this number drain away almost immediately, I think. Well, soon enough. Anyway. Actually, I shouldn't have changed that thinking about it. <laughs> we'll stick it on standard still. Yeah. Because we want the research first. There it goes. It goes back in now. That's no big deal. But yeah, once they're done with the Old World Relics, we'll switch it then to Knowledge um, or Textbooks. And then we can use that to get the Field Kitchen, upgrade it, level up our clan, and assign the worker to the upgraded kitchen. Got it. All right, so we've already set up a learning environment because we just switched it really quickly. Use specialized work post. Don't have to do that yet. And okay, all right, we'll just let time go by. What else can we just get? The logging hut. So let's get that now. Somewhere over here, if you can fit. Alright, that's a good one. 320 rubbish, and then we'll start giving people their homes soon enough. The fishing hut's not done yet either, so we still have nine people not doing anything. So we gotta wait till morning time before people start working again here. Alright, there we go, so now we're fishing. Fishing. And then we also just got the wood, uh, the logging camp done as well. All right, cool. So we need another fishing hut probably, because I don't think it's going to be enough with the one we have. We've just run out of food. Things are getting a little dodgy. And uh, we need another storage thing out here so we can go further. Can we do that already? Small storage, 300 rubbish. Yeah, we're short on rubbish. I do have pretty much the maximum I can get, I think, on the go, almost. There's some out there. That's outside the boundary. Yeah, just gonna have to just gonna have to wait for it to build up. Basically, we just have so much to build. Could get another sorting hut somewhere like there in the future, and that would get us our two other piles. 150 to get it just now. I think we don't. I don't think we need it. Let's just let time play for a second. Let me get my bearings and figure things out. As to what the specific next step is. So, another field kitchen, I suppose, would be good. And it needed wood to do that. So we're getting wood now, so we'll just wait. Survival field kitchen was 300. And how much are we getting per day? We're getting 102 daily. Alright, this has just burned through all of that, so we'll switch it to an academy now. So we have another 12 research. Survival, fishing wharf, forager house. Did we get that yet? Developed wood, developed a forager hut. So that's what we're going to do next. So that's going to allow us to go from making 12.5 food to making 21.7 from surrounding berry bushes and stuff. So we want to upgrade this. 
Uh, there, sorry. 250 wood and 250 uh, rubbish. So we can't do it just yet. Let me just check the tech tree as well. Was there anything left in growth I could get? The Academy Debate. No, I can't get that just yet. All right. So they're going to be getting through the textbooks, I guess, if they haven't done it already. Yeah, they're doing it now. And then we'll be able to level up our clan and become a little bit more efficient with certain things. So the next thing I want to get is a fishing hut, a second fishing hut. Because two fishing huts should be able to go into one upgraded kitchen, I think. So fishing dock 300 plastic is what we need. We're barely on the edge of survivability with food right now. I feel like I've actually been playing fairly, dare I say, fairly optimally, but um, it's tough, man. Oh, there's actually three deposits here. There's another one there. Didn't notice that. Good. So yeah, right about here. Is there any problem with that? I guess we could tuck it in further. Okay. Maybe put an expiration flag just out here to uncover that bit. Let me double check I have not missed anything as well. Don't think so. And we can't go further than that yet. We need way more rubbish and plastic. I keep calling it plastic. It's rubbish. There is plastic in the game that you get later on. So I really need to get that out of my head. I always do that with certain games. I just call things like different things. And it can end up confusing people quite a lot. All right. We'll just speed up time. Oh, we got another um, Old World Relic. Nice. Maybe we hadn't researched it yet. I thought we did. Alright, so that's a priority. So fishing. We're getting 15 daily, but I think they're probably just going to be eating that before they can even convert it a lot of the time. We'll see. It does seem like they go all the way back to storage to deposit it there. And then someone takes it to the, the field kitchen. That's interesting. So I guess then... Hmm. I guess ideally it would have been just best to have the kitchen right next to here. Alright. 44 rubbish. How much is needed for here now? Another 70. So 44 is on the way. If there's anything else we can pick up, there's some there. More food here. Food is regrowing again. Good. Not much of it though. We have five people who are idle. By the way, the idle people don't count for the ten that we have in this stockpile. A roof over our heads. I will take care of it. Eventually. <laughs> Do we have a timer on that? Seven days. That's easy. For everyone, is it? Oh my god. <laughs> we'll see. Alright. Guys, priority is food, okay? And even water. Remember, we're getting a little bit of water, but not enough. Our food's disgusting. Oh, stop. All right, I'm just waiting on this goddamn building to get done so we can get second load of fish coming in. What's our wood situation? It's almost at the level I need it to be. I want to build another field kitchen. Going to build it much closer to the storage this time. In fact, we could just start it now so they start delivering things. It's interesting. This being just that little further out has delayed its construction quite a lot. But there you go. All right, so now we're bringing in another load of fish here. This has already run out of fish coming in. So I might even halt the production. If I deconstruct it, I wonder, do we get everything back? We get half of the stuff back. I'm going to do that, though, because this is the one I'm going to upgrade, and then it should be fine. So that's a mistake. I admit it, okay? Uh, right, so this is done now. We can now upgrade our clan. Uh, we can get a point in fortitude. Physical strength, stamina, and endurance. Fortitude allows your people to work more efficiently in jobs like catching fish or, uh, for safe food, etc. So let's improve the specialization. Boom. So that's done. So we're going to have to upgrade this kitchen. Uh, once we get the tech for it, we have to switch this back to standard mode now. And then we'll get the last 10 points that we need to do that. The food is disgusting. Yep, I know. <laughs> Alright, good. So they're just waiting on getting raw fish. They're having a problem with that. But they're making it when they do get it. And then they're just about done. Oh, you're killing me, man. 94%. 
So how's the situation? So they're eating the food as soon as it gets made. Is anyone dying yet? We've got 30 people. Nobody's died yet. That's something. There's 27 homeless. We've got four days left to build the shelters. Right, so what we'll do is we'll say convert this then. That's five people. Then I need to build effectively like 10 homes or something. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. And also, this needs to be upgraded soon. So tech-wise, survival. The forager has the field kitchen to the regular kitchen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun a bit. We need to have developed planks for that. The forager house I can upgrade. Oh, yeah. So this requires 250 wood and 250 plastic. If we cancel that, do we get it back? We do. Oh, no. Okay, it's okay, right? I've cancelled it, but I don't want to destroy it. It's still there. Okay, good. <laughs> Not that it really matters. I could just build the houses anyway, but... Instead, I want to put it into this. Alright, so there we go. So, the forager house is now going to be upgraded. That's going to produce more food for us. That's super important. Although food is so low around here. I really do feel like you can barely sustain 30 people with the amount of food that's on the map. I mean, we're getting basically every fishing deposit. Yeah, there's really nothing else for us. There's one fishing deposit like out here that I'm not getting yet. Just tell someone to uncover that. What's your problem? Very little resources left in the area. Right, so this is upgraded and automatically our worker who is based on fortitude has gone into there. So that is a specific worker that you can put in there. We've got one. So that's done. So that's done. Both of those are done. We still have to provide shelter for everyone. All right, we're after getting nine more research. New development possibilities available. Good, 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 good. All right, not so bad. All right, restore the radio tower. Use the radio tower to re locate remaining groups of scouts. The Road Together, Chapter 1, Prologue done. Easy peasy. All right, integrate other clans into the community. We need to work together toward one goal under one leader. You, you. <laughs> Human nature and its many challenges will be your first real obstacle. All right. All right, let's take a little breather. Assess the situation. We've got two people not doing anything, a full stockpile here. We're probably going to fail this mission, which I don't know what this... Damn. This soundtrack. Cool. Nice. Right, we've got three days for that. How many people are homeless? 27. We can only house three at a time, so I just do not think we're going to get the plastic for that, so forget it. It's just going to fail, okay? <laughs> but we'll do the other things, we'll expand out this way, it's more important. Because food is ultimately far more important. Alright, let's unlock rubble. Can we do that yet? We need 25, goddamn. All right, we're going to build our other small storage hut out here, extending our range of discovery by quite a lot, and then send people further and further out. It's cool music, man. <laughs> I feel like I don't want to say anything to talk over the lyrics. Food is ha we're hanging on there with food, though. No one's actually starving yet. It'll tell us if they are. Um, hunger. So there's zero people hungry. Health, rest, thirst, homelessness. We can see everyone that's homeless. So we're right on the edge all the time, barely feeding our people. That's why I'm, like, rushing to basically get over here, find things. If we can explore further, that'd be great. And we're on day 17. I'm flying through it. Now, we can get people off this building now because there's nothing to do here. Come on, don't give up. There we go. Ah, oh, goddamn. They're so slow. It's 
Someone got poisoned after eating risky food. Damn it. All right, we're gonna have to deal with that as well. Love you can see them on the little boats going out fishing as well. All right, boom. Four people are working here. So what we'll do is we'll lower down the amount here, increase the amount here just a bit, start putting down some new flags to go find things. All right, tons of rubbish out there, new places to explore, and then we can go into these different buildings, maybe get some food, some medicine, some research. Yes, let's go into that as well. They're going to be super busy there for now, so let's just lower that down and bring that up so that there's more people on that side than this side. All right, 30 people, everyone doing something. Water is getting low, though, now, so we're going to have to... Any plastic we get, just put it straight into getting more water. All right, so we're just going to put it down in the same spot, really. Priority construction, please. All right, looking good. At least we've got a lot of a lot of rubbish, a good amount of wood and everything, so that's fine. So let's turn off wood for a little bit. Let's get them making water. So that should be enough water now, right? We're making five per day, and we'll just store it up for a bit. 30 people got a new status, annoyed. What are you going to do about it? Leave? Where are you going to go? <laughs> we got some information about our clan. So unrest is building up. At some point you'll also be able to exile a different clan if you don't want them. <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry. Water is a bit low. Thirsty one person is thirsty. That's okay. No one's hungry. Somehow we're surviving that. Your decisions can raise or lower the unrest of a clan. High unrest means your clan is not happy with the situation in the community and may, and may de uh, demonstrate in different ways. Okay. Probably negative events, I guess. Yeah. You see all this blood? You see it? There's so much. It's my blood. These punks jumped me as I was returning to my tent, carrying a heavy bucket of water. They pushed me over and then kicked me until I stopped moving. This is just 10 minutes ago. 15 at the most. An ugly old monster. This is... Uh, they called me, sorry, laughing while they beat me. This was fun for them. I know my tumors aren't going to win me, me any beauty contests, but I don't deserve this. I want those kids punished. If I want them punished for what they did, unless you think it would have been better that they killed me. Capture them and beat them soundly. Let them know that young age does not protect them. Jesus Christ. Let them go, they're just neglected. If they're parents, you should be punished. They'll pay you for compensation. Have them locked up for a few days and see if they understand what they did. Yeah, do that. 30 people got a new status. Glad. Good. 30 people. You think the people who were locked up weren't happy about it? Oh, and it didn't actually take anything away from me. Okay. Alright. So water is fixed. Food is somehow we have a bit. So that's good. Um, they're eating the risky food if they need to, I guess, now and then. And then we're going to be exploring in these different places now. What do we have? Rubbish, water, etc. Good. Search that as well if you can. Just search everything. Unlock and search. No, I don't want to do that yet. We have one key. Could be quite valuable depending on where we choose to go. Alright, looking good. And this is our district as well. So we can have our information about Reed Camp. And then we can look around to see the different islands eventually as well when we get to them. Really like to get them in this episode, but it seems like I might not even do that. I don't know how I'm like further behind than I was in the first time I played. The first time I played it, I got the radio tower up and running, I think. I did go over an hour though, I guess. What's that symbol? That's just where our home base is, is it? So, uh, thirst, that's okay. One person's thirsty, 27 homeless. We'll fix all of that. We're building up a lot of rubbish now, which is good. So actually, yeah, we can start putting down these extra homes. In fact, we need to put some down out this way. Coronal mass ejection. Large eruption of magnetized plasma from the sun's outer atmosphere. We'll just skip this for now. Time is... We're time sensitive. So. Uh, Well-being tents. So we'll just build, I don't know, yeah. Two houses out this way. Or tents. So that way they don't have to travel this far every time when they're working out here. 
So we're helping that down to 21 now. Not so bad. That was actually really good. Let's renovate that house as well. The unrest is going down. It's good to see. There's our radio tower, by the way. So we can search it. And we get radio batteries for doing it. We found something. It was uh, in a cage. Barely alive, but alive. It's beautiful. I haven't seen something like this in years. I think it's a girl. Oh, the white dove. We should feed it and then let it free. Or we should cook it. We need the food more than we need the symbol. Keep the dove as a symbol of hope. We'll take turns taking care of it. Uh, No, let it free. I think... Oh, yeah. I, again, we had this in the demo. I think I said that there's a chance it'll find other doves, maybe. You know? Whereas if we keep it, I don't know. Although there's a chance it'll die, I guess. But, oh, set it free. All right, people are placated. People are happy. Look at that. Negative 12 unrest. This is great. This is going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Food's coming in again. We just need to upgrade that food. I'm waiting and getting more research. Uh, we do... We did just tell them to search these places and get more extra points for it. So we should be able to do that soon enough. Yes, there we go. We just got one. So we'll switch this back. There's already two stored here, is there? Okay. Everyone's working right now. Where can we take them off? Well, let's just take two people off here. Get them back on there. And then maybe tell these guys to get that little bit of food that's lying around here. Sweet. Alright, good. I'm going to switch this back down to just one. They're running out of plastic. It doesn't need two people on it necessarily. So we'll get another person back on there. All right, nice. So, um, we got the renovated house up and running. It looks good. People are getting their food out there. We're getting our books, our textbooks. Can we do a little explore out that way? And then maybe survival fishing. Is there any fish out here? There's one fish there that we're not getting. And it looks like there's... Uh, we're not able to put it down here, though. It's blocked in. That has to be gotten through some other means, I guess. Alright, cool. 845 wood. Goddamn. We picked up a lot. Anything I'm missing? I just want to double-check these buildings so I didn't miss something obvious. This one needs to be unlocked. I mean, I suppose we could just unlock it, right? Why not? I don't see anything else that needs a key. Yep, let's unlock it and search it. Great. Alright, 600 rubbish. We can get people their extra homes. Let's go well-being. Uh, we'll put one out this way. So that's three people that live out there. Another one over this way. Another one near here. Uh, maybe another one further up this way. Did I ever search this? I did. Okay. And yeah, I don't know. Just another one out here. Alright, it's going to be like all the plastic we have, basically. They can build it in any order. We're just trying to house everyone. 16 people that need homes. And then we'll look to build the radio tower. We've got 31 research now. So, now I can finally get rubble. And then we can go back in here and get the kitchen, right? So you have to have developed planks. Oh my god. Damn. It's way further in than I guess I realized. Yeah, to get planks we need woodcutting stations. And then we can actually make planks. Because then that's what we need to upgrade the other building. So that's actually a, quite a, while, a, a ways off, I guess. A shack. A medical tent. Hmm. I'll just leave it for a moment. We've only got six points. Alright, let's just keep it sped up. Tent is good. So what I think needs to happen is we need to unassign people and then reassign them. And the people that live here will work this building. So let's try that. Just out of curiosity. Just to test it. So if I turn this on now and turn this back on. No, it didn't do it. It might do it over time. It does tell you in the kind of tooltips and, and, and load screens and stuff like building houses next to buildings will auto-assign the people to live closest to where they work. So I'm guessing it just takes a bit of time. 
to figure it all out. Or maybe it does it on reload, or it does it on reassigning a lot of jobs or something. I don't know. So I imagine... See, the blue line is where they live. Or sorry, where they work. So they live here, and they're working all the way over there. So that's quite a long travel time. So, but these guys are working right next to here. So that makes sense. That's fine. Yeah, we'll wait for the other buildings to get built and then see how it all shakes out. There's two more to go. We're going to need one extra one, I think, to house the last person. How's that food situation? We're on balance of zero a day. Zero a day. So we're, we're even for the amount of people we have. Although it would be nice if we could store something. Although, I guess every now and then we can pick up little bits, right? Like this. Alright, let's restore that radio tower then. So, let's go search it. Recently built, built the new tents. That's all good. Can't scavenge forever. We're not savages. Let's grow our own food. Do something. We c yeah, I know. Well, can I get planks? 25. Sorry, I thought it was 15. Yeah, still a, wa a ways off yet. Medical tent is something that we're going to need because people are sick. So let's get that. And with medication, I believe... Yeah, sorry. Let me just build a medical tent. Uh, oh my god, it's huge. Yeah, with medication, effectively, people will go in here. I don't think you need a doctor. People just take the medication in this building. And that should get rid of the food poisoning that one person has. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> 140 and 100 for wood. Okay. All right, well, I think everything's all good now. I've basically stabilized things. Like, food sh is right on the edge, I guess, but it should be generally... Oh, actually, it goes down to zero a day when it's empty. That's not good. <laughs> this... Yeah, I don't know. Well, we're not starving, so I'm assuming I'm handling it, just about. So, in the next episode, I'll probably slow down a little bit more and talk through a few things a bit better. So I feel like I, you know, I was, was trying to rush through. But in the next episode, we're going to basically get this old radio tower powered up and then go out and find other colonists on other islands, get other people from different clans and ideologies, and then mix everyone together and see kind of how it all shakes out. So that's going to have to be it for this episode. I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch all the way through. Remember, if you want to see more from this series beyond this initial sponsorship, just leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Again, it is worth mentioning that this is a sponsored series. The game did release today over on Steam. Check the description and the top comment. Again, thank you to Raven's Court and to Vile Monarch for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.